Today we're going to do a startup on the Defender HD system. Um, this is a whole house system that we have to use in extreme cases whenever we have high TDS levels or maybe just a high contaminant that we can't uh, remove to a safe level with just regular conventional filtration and water treatment. So um, this is a reverse osmosis system that will strip all the, the uh, bad contaminants from the water and give you nice clean um, drinking and safe water when it's, when it's completed. Now, for this system, uh, it's, it's truly, um, it's, it's crucial that you have the proper pretreatment. Um, in this case, we're using some iron removal as well as some water softening. But in a lot of cases, we would use what's called anti scaling. Um, this particular house, we're not doing the whole house with RO, just certain areas. So we had to have the softener to treat the other areas. That's the main reason why we, we're not using anti scaling on this house. Typically, that is our go to is anti scaling opposed to water softening. So once we've installed everything, basically what we need to do is purge the system of air and start to adjust the flow rates. Now, these flow rates are crucial when uh, starting these systems up. If you have these flow rates wrong, uh, a little too much or too less, you can uh, cause damage to the systems or even damage to the membranes and cause things to fail prematurely. So it's crucial that uh, you have, have these set up correctly. Now, in the manual, it'll tell you exactly what flow rates you should have depending on your system. Um, the system that we're installing today is a 4,000 gallon per day unit. Um, that unit will do about 2.78 gallons per minute as far as permeate water. Now, when we talk about permeate water or product water, we're talking about the good water that would actually go into the storage tank. So, that is truly your limitation. If I say that it's 2.78 gallons per minute, that's all you're going to be able to make with this particular unit. Um, when we set this up for standard recovery rates, it would waste about three gallons per minute to drain. Um, so this unit tends to be somewhere around 47% recovery opposed to um, a lot of the other ones which we could get with, with higher recovery. Now because we've done so well with, with treating everything here at this house, we have the ability to run this up to 75% recovery, which is what we're gonna to do today. So let's get started. The first thing we wanna do is make sure we have water onto the unit, which in this particular unit, we put a ball valve right here, so we can slowly put some water into it. As we're putting water in, we're gonna make sure our Recycle or recirculation valve is completely closed. So turn it counterclockwise, and we want to turn our concentrate valve counterclockwise. Now you can see you have an inlet pressure gauge, and it's running up close to 80 psi at this home. And then we have what's called the system pressure gauge. Now this pressure gauge is telling us how much pressure we have feeding the system, and this pressure gauge is going to tell us how much pressure we're putting on the membranes with the repressurization pump. So once we have water in here, now we're going to get to the point where we're going to bleed the water out of the system. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and push the on button. And you'll see three dots, the solenoid valve will open and you'll start to get some water pushing through. Then the pump kicks on. Now this is our current TDS level because we're really not rejecting anything yet because we have everything basically running wide open. So once we have it running, we want to look at our concentrate or our system pressure here. And we can see that we have very little to any system pressure here. So we're going to wait for a few minutes and let it kind of bleed the air out of it and see if we can't get that system pressure to come up. basically stabilized and looks like we're running right at 80 psi so we're putting virtually no back pressure on the system so if you want to get down here now you can see our flow meters this is our recirculation or recycle you can see it's at zero because we still have this valve shut this is our concentrate flow meter 
It's kind of hard to see here. Let's see if I can put some light on this for you. You can see there's a metal float in here. It's called a meniscus. We read our reading at the largest diameter. So you can see on there there's a little large, larger circle on it that flows around. So if you look on the left here, this is our gallon per minute scale. We're going to dial this back. I don't know if you can see that or not. I don't know. We're going to dial this back to three gallons per minute. To do that, we're going to slowly close the concentration or the concentrator of the waste valve. Slowly bring that down until that large diameter of the meniscus is on three gallons per minute. Okay, and we're there now. Once we're to that point, then we check and make sure our pressure up here has an eclipse 150. If it has, which in this case it hasn't, but if, it, if this pressure has went up to 150, then we would move over to this valve. This is called the throttle valve that's actually on the repressurization pump. By turning this valve, we can manipulate the system pressure. Um, we want to we want to run the system at a pressure that will give us the design flow rate, which for this particular system is 2.78 gallons per minute. But we never want to exceed 150 psi on that system pressure, even if we're not flowing at design flow rate, um, because these systems are not rated for much more than 150 psi. In cold water applications. You may have to run at 150 PSI and still not meet your design flow rate. That's the nature of RO as well as cold water. Um, when we have cold water, for every degree below 77, we lose about 2% of the output. So it's, it's crucial that you keep that in mind when you're sizing the system. Typically somebody in the north that would call me and say, hey, I need 2,000 gallons per day, I'm probably going to recommend a 4,000 gallon per day system, maybe even larger than that, depending on what other conditions we have as far as water quality and whatnot. So um, the pressure is crucial to the system's run, uh, running success, but it's also crucial to um, or, or it's also relevant to what the temperature and the ambient uh, surroundings are where you put the system. So now that we have it, we have it running at the design parameter as far as the waste, and then we can look and see what we're getting as far as permeate, and you can see, or the product, and you can see we're a little less than two. We want 278. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and bump this system pressure up and max it at 150 to see if we can get good water pressure, uh, or I mean good water flow. Now, right now we're in our hometown of Indianapolis and it's December so the water's fairly cold right now. It's probably close to, I would say, 50 to, to or I mean 55 to 56 degrees. So that's the reason why we're seeing some diminishing flow rates here is because the water is so cold. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this throttle valve down here on the pump and we're going to bring this pump or system pressure up to 150. Now, if you want to increase the pressure, you're going to turn the valve out, so counterclockwise. To decrease the pressure, you're going to turn it in. Now, this is a globe valve or a needle valve. It's, it's actually a globe valve, and it's very sensitive. So if you go too far too quick, you'll spike that. So we really want to just go a little bit about that much and then check our pressure again. You can see I've exceeded it just by that little bit of a turn. So I'm going to go back just a little bit the other way. Still a little longer, I'm going to go back just a little bit more. And now we're just under there. So we basically have a, we've set this system at its maximum capabilities as far as permeate flow out, output. Um, once you're at 150, we, we don't have any choice, we can't go any higher. So that got us right at two gallons per minute. So we're just a little bit shy of, of what the design parameter is, which is pretty good for the, the water temperature that we have. Um, now once, once we've set this up and we have it set up at standard recovery rates, now this is when we would say, okay, let's go ahead and recycle some water because we know we have 
fairly clean water going into the system and we can do that. Now if you was on a well that let's say had um, an abundance of 800 or more uh, TDS, 800 ppm or, or milligrams per liter TDS, I really would recommend recycling water. Um, you're going to save a little bit of water and that's good, but you're also going to destroy the membranes because you're putting a lot of highly concentrated water back towards the membrane. On lower TDS, it's not as bad because the concentration you're putting back is fairly low. So when you do it on, on large uh, or high TDS units, you're just destroying the membrane prematurely. So let's go ahead and, 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 and we'll, we'll uh, do the recycle. Now, I have uh, the actual flow for this in the manual so you'll know if you're going to run at 75% what the settings do. For a 4,000, typically it's like 0.8 and 2.3, which is very hard to dial in on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do one gallon per minute to the waste and two gallons per minute recycle. So now that means for every two gallons or, or so that we make, we're going to let we're going to waste less than one gallon. So that brings the recovery rate way up on the system. Well, we've already we already have three gallons per minute going to the concentrate. So we want to share some of that water with the recycle. So what we'll do is we'll open the recycle valve. going so we get it to about two gallons per minute here which we can't get it until we tell, take this down so we're going to take the, the waste down to one gallon per minute now by turning it in slowly gallons per minute now, so we're going to turn that back down a little bit. So it's a two. We'll go down to one here. Make sure we're at two here. And then now we're running at 75% recovery. This should not change the system pump pressure because you're not doing anything but manipulating where the flows are going. You're not necessarily changing the flow rate. So, and that's exactly what happened. The, the pressure stayed the same. And then now we're actually putting clean water into the storage tank. And when I say clean water, you can look at the, the screen here and you can see we went from like 494 TDS down to pi. So we're cleaning really well at this point. And you can see our water quality is good. Now, you have the ability to change where you want that water quality light to, to turn on. For us, we put it from, from the factory at 100 because depending on how bad your water is, 100 may be the best that you can get. I would say anything under 100 that um, we, we would probably need some additional treatment. So that's why we put it at 100. Um, you have the ability to change that wherever you want. There's a little screw here that's labeled SP, and you can change the set point by pushing the button and then change it, and then screwing that one way or the other to change where you want the alarm to go off. Um, you also have the ability, if you think that this is not working, you can remove the sensor, which is at the top of this flow meter here, and put it in a controlled TDS level. You can get uh, calibration solutions from our website. But you can put that probe in there and then you use what's called the calibration button or the calibration screw and you can screw it in right to the level to know that you're calibrating your sensor and then reinstall it. But um, we'll, we'll probably put some, some links here for you to be able to see the control solution so you can adjust it if you want. Now once you've got this running, we basically need to get some water in the tank before we bring the rest of the system online. So we're going to let this run for a little bit and get a little bit of water in here, and then we'll bring the repressurization pump online as well as the onboard UV. Okay, so once we've ran the water a little bit, I have enough in here that I'm above the suction line in here, so I'm going to go ahead and start the pump. So um, when we sell these 
defender whole house systems and we have the pump and UV mounted on here, it's important that we have separate power sources for this. The UV or the RO itself should have its own separate power source. And the UV and the repressure repressurization pump should have their own separate power source. Um, when we run these units at 110, we can hit up to 15 amps as far as the startup voltage. And if we was to put all that on 120 amp circuit, we would have problems. So I recommend you do an isolated 20 amp circuit for the RO and then an isolated 20 amp circuit for the UV and the repressurization pump. So once we plug the pump in, then down on the pump itself, there's an on and off button in here. Let me get some light on for you. I know where it is, but let me show you. Right here's the on and off button. We're just gonna push it and it'll come on and it'll start to pull water from the tank. Uh, make sure that you have your tank valve open on the bottom of the tank so that way you can actually draw water in. But it'll run up to 65 PSI and it'll pressurize the UV, which I can feel the cold water in here now. Now once you have water in the UV, then we can go ahead and plug the UV in as well. So let me get that plug here. And then now that we have the UV plugged in, if you look on the front here, the UV controller, you'll see that it goes through a series of initial startup. It checks the lamp, it checks for sensors and everything, but it'll eventually rest at a home screen that'll show you your number of days left before you need to change that UV bulb. Uh, it's, it's important that you change these every year in order to ensure that you have the correct intensity to, to stop bacteria. Okay, so once we've started up the the MQ3 pump, the repressurization pump, and we brought the UV online. It's went through all its initial uh, steps, and it'll go to a home screen there, and then you're basically ready to use the water. Now, I would recommend that you flush this tank out because you'll get some of a somewhat of a plastic smell sometimes because when they're brand new, um, you can get that smell. Um, you also have the ability to put a little chlorine in there if you want. You can clean the, the outsides of the tank and, and, and flush those to the drain uh, just to be sure that you know you, you have it clean. But um, regardless of what we do, you'll, you'll kind of get a weird smell at first until we run some water through here. So you may even fill this tank up and flush it you know, a couple times or something. But if you use chlorine in here, that'll, that'll help expediate the process. But, once you've, once you've got all this online, you fill your tank, then you just basically enjoy your water. Now, every once in a while you'll come back and you'll check your flows to make sure they're still at design parameters um, and you, you make adjustments accordingly. Now, the natural, the natural degradation of the membranes will cause your actual product or permeate water to start to drop and you'll, you'll keep your pressure at 150, but by default you'll start to lose all that and that's when it's time to change the membrane. Most of the time, um, in extreme cases, you may have to change them every three years or so, sometimes every year, depending on how bad the water is. But in most cases, we usually get somewhere around five years out of them to get everything set up properly. Um, this was the startup of the Defender HD system. It's the only RO that is built here in the Midwest and shipped from the Midwest. Um, we're, we're glad to be the ones distributing. Uh, again, this is US Water Systems, this is Defender HD.